Just ask, the success you had in the Mid-American Conference, how much did that attract you to Jim, and how much do you think that translates to being able to win this league? I think it translates a lot, right? Um, success at the mid-major level, being able to achieve those, what he did at Ohio and, and Kent State was a big piece of what we looked at, because um, coaching is coaching. I think this is a coach's league, and uh, and we're going to need someone, I believe, that it's important to find someone who has, has that experience and someone who's been successful. Do you discount what might have happened at Boston College because it, it is different than this league and, and that kind of the opposite of what I just asked about the man. No, I don't discount it. I think it's experience because it's, I think you heard Jim say he learned from a lot of it. But I also think um, Boston College in the ACC is a, it's a challenging job. The job at Canisius is a challenging job in our league. So um, I think that experience is going to help him. And, uh, and, and the, the connections and the relationships that he's made, that's just to continue to enhance what he, what he did in building his career over 34 years. Um, a year ago, he put out a release with him saying Coach Witherspoon was coming back for a year, and there was a mention about investing more into the basketball program. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate a little bit on what that was in the past year and maybe if there's any new investment or kind of where that's going? Well, we're, we're launching a, uh, over the past year, we've been talking about and working toward launching a basketball excellence fund um, and a fundraising effort to try and significantly increase the resources in our program. Um, on men's and women's basketball to help us be competitive in our league. That started last year, and, um, and we, we're moving forward with that again as we move from here. Um, we also had to work and look internally on how can we do, how can we raise some additional funds. So we played another guarantee game, and and that those resources go back to our program. The institution has stepped up to try and help us in very challenging times to to be a competitive program within our league, but most of it is going to be in this basketball excellence fund. That we're How important are those resources and investments toward you know, winning games and winning league championships? Resources matter in Division One athletics. There's no doubt about that. If you look at the if you look at the statistics, the correlation is clear. Those institutions that spend more win more. Um, doesn't mean that you can't win, and we've proven that you can win without it. St. Peter's in our conference has proven that you can win without being at the top. But you need to be. You also need to be moving in that direction, and that's what our focus is going to be: is to try and to help the people, the, the, the Canisius community, the Western New York community, to to be willing to invest in our program and to help us support the program that they all want to see. The landscape is changing, obviously, a ton in college basketball with NIL transfer portal. How much discussion did you have with uh, Jim about that during the interview process, and what were his thoughts about how you guys as a program and him as a head coach should handle that going forward uh, in this new landscape? Uh, the NIL at the transfer portal has been around, right? So we've been we've been working our way through that, and it just is the volume has increased. So um, that's a part of it. There's more more students are moving, and, and you've got to be able to react to that. You, all of us can talk about and say how we don't like that and we would like to be able to see students stay and develop over four years. I think everyone would love to see that, but that's just not our reality, so we have to adjust to it and figure out how can we be successful in that, trying to find young men, young women in our other sports um, that can come and contribute. And hopefully, if they have an opportunity that they've earned something to allow them to go somewhere else and have a different experience, then is then we have to feel good about it. And hopefully, both of us have benefited. The students benefited and the programs benefited. Um, on the NIL side, um, that's a little different, right? And it's a uh, that's a bit of a new era, of course. Um, it's what every student every, that's being recruited is asking about, so we have to be able to answer that question. Um, and that's something that we, we're working with. We're, we're going to be launching a collective next week um, to, to, that is going to help us in that area to be able to answer those questions. We are, we're going to have to also fundraise for that, right? So the resources are, are tight everywhere, and we are not going to be, I don't, look, I don't look at it and say that we're going to be a national leader in NIL, but we have to be able to say that we have, a, we have an opportunity. I believe, and I think our coaches believe, that the NIL at our level is probably best utilized to retain students. For students that have come in and they understand what's expected of them and they've proven their worth at our institutions and the coaches and some of the people who would be willing to support them staying, I think that's the true value for institutions like us in the NIL. And then you mentioned how when you started the search, you reached, you had some guys already in mind, then you had other people reach out to you and you had uh, basically, that's how you collect all the names. When did Jim Christian pop into uh, the, the range of possibilities. How did you guys, I guess, come across his name? And uh, was there any surprise that a man of his resume would, would have 
uh, genuine interest in this position at this point? I wouldn't say I was surprised because I was really, um, with Jim in particular, because we had a lot of really quality candidates who were interested in the job, and I think that was refreshing for me. Um, and there's only 351 of these jobs in the country. That's that they're they're hard to get, and a lot of people want them. Um, so it is it is a real opportunity for us. So Jim's name, you know, Jim was nominated, uh, and and when I began. And it's not just okay. Well, let me. Here's the name. Let me. Then I start begin to talk to people who, um, who have Kanisha's ties, who, whose opinion I value, and that's where in asking people about Jim throughout the process, it, it just continued to to rise because of the things that he's done, the type of person he is, the reputation he has in the industry. Um, that continued to be positive check marks all along the way. Um, so as we continued through that process, he just continued to rise in it. And then you have the opportunity to meet him. Uh, you have the opportunity to work to talk to people that have worked with them, um, and all of those things mattered in the in the decision process. About how many candidates were there? Uh, we probably about there was there were well over a hundred. I wouldn't say there were a hundred and twenty, but there were there were well over a hundred. And you dwindled that down to you know. Yeah, I, I probably spoke to on the phone or I, on the phone. I spoke to probably at least twenty five candidates extensively. Okay. Um, by meaning, I had a long conversation with them uh, about fit, about their interest in the program. Um, easily 25 of them uh, and then from there we had a series of Zoom meet meetings um, probably I'd have to get the numbers but I think we probably did about 12 Zooms with different candidates, sometimes multiple Zooms with candidates uh, and then we had folks come to campus. With head coaching experience, how important was that in evaluating the different candidates you had? It was important. Um, I, I, If you look at the last hires I've had at basketball, I've, I've tended to fall that way um, and I think it is important. I think this is a coach's lead. I mentioned that before. Um, and I think the experience that a, a leader has in, in managing a program and managing a staff is important. That being said, um, we've had some head coaches that have been very successful as assistants. Our women's coach, Sahar Nusebe, has done a great job. So um, I, did not dis I did not dismiss assistant coaches. I certainly value head coaching experience, but I, um, I, and we talked to a lot of assistant coaches, and and um, and I would, and I can see in the future a person being successful. It's just at this time, and with how we evaluated things, I felt Jim and his experience was the best fit. The success the time before I had coming into Quinnipiac is that something that you know maybe you noticed and. Not to say you hired the same type of coach, but is that something that maybe can be replicated? Yeah, I, you know, I didn't think about it. Someone, you might have been the person who pointed it out, or someone else did. That it said, you know, it's similar to Tom Pacora, um, and you know, a veteran coach who's kind of had a little different perspective on some things and came in and really got a group of young men going in the right direction. Um, I, I, I can see the parallels with it, but it was not a hey that worked over there. I want to do that. That wasn't the, the focus.